Hey, what's up, guys? CM Praisner 99. This is part of the Deep Sheet weekly schedule, the Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I am the second Friday, so you guys will be seeing me every other Friday. But then every other Friday, you're going to be seeing Robbie. He's just probably going to talk about wrestling or some stupid stuff like that. <sighs> but now we're here to talk about movies. More important. I'm about to tell you guys my top 10 movies of 2016. I'm here today in my messy basement. You can see the water bottles and the wonderful guitars and my small TV, so that's nice. But before we get to the list, I want to tell you some honorable mentions, which are... Patriot's Day, Deepwater Horizon, Hell or High Water, Zootopia, and Manchester by the Sea. Now coming in at number 10 is Moonlight. The three people that played Chiron in this movie were amazing, especially the teenager. I thought he did a phenomenal job. There's one scene in particular where he just makes this stone cold face at the camera and it links his younger self to his older self. And then we get a feel of why all these people are connected somehow. Uh, three different levels of Chiron's life. I think it's a great idea and it's something really hard to pull off and I thought he pulled it off great. At number nine is 10 Cloverfield Lane. This has one of the best performances I think of the year. If John Goodman could win Best Supporting Actor, I would vote for him. I love the original Cloverfield so I was really excited to go see 10 Cloverfield Lane and I was blown away by it. I love how it's sort of connected to Cloverfield but for a while, you didn't feel like that at all. You were wondering, like, how is this connected? Or John Goodman, he's talking about this kind of stuff, and maybe it's linked to it, but we don't really know. And then I think the ending is really great, and it tied to Cloverfield very well. At number eight is Sing Street, the movie no one has heard of yet. It's on Netflix, so you should go watch it now. Right now. And then come back and tell me how you think. No, but Sing Street, guys, is about, it's an Irish movie, so it is it is hard to understand them sometimes, but it's a movie about a kid who starts to have a crush on a girl and then starts to form a band because of that crush. And then he gets more invested into this band, and he wants to get better and better and better, and they want to be, like, popular. And it's just cool to see a band start from the bottom up, you know? The songs in this movie are amazing. I love all of them. And I love the the main character and his brother. I love their chemistry. The scene, there's a scene at the end. There's just one little motion his brother does at the end of the movie. But it made me tear up a little bit. I'm serious. At number seven is everyone's favorite crime-fighting hero, Deadpool. Deadpool was one of the most fun movie experiences I've ever had. Just from the opening credits alone. Just made, I just knew this movie was going to be hilarious. And it was. I just love all the jokes they made in real life. I love how they break the fourth wall. Like certain jokes where he, Colossus says, Come on, we have to take you back to the professor. And Deadpool's like, Is that McAvoy or Stewart? I can never tell with these alternate universes. They're so confusing. I just think they, they poked fun at real life movies so well. And I'm really glad it was a big success. At number six is probably the most controversial movie I have on my list, Swiss Army Man. This is an amazing movie about being weird and how it's okay. And they're just hilarious together. The things they say are just amazing. I love the soundtrack in this, how it's like they start to sing it on their own and then they do it. I love in the movie when... When Manny's just like sitting on his back, singing along to the song, he's like, ba, 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 ba. But Swiss Army Man's message was just so amazing. There's one moment where Manny says, why do we even want to go back home? It seems like it's just no fun there. You don't get to do anything. And it's like, whoa, you don't. Being out on your own is amazing because you can be whoever you want to be and be as weird as you want to be. I just love the message behind this movie. And number five, we're getting to the good ones. This is actually what I think was the funniest movie of the year, The Nice Guys. I'm starting to become a real fan of Ryan Gosling. I think he's a really good actor dramatically and comedically. Can comedically? That's a word. Yeah. The, yeah, that's a word. I love Ryan Gosling's character. I love him and Russell Crowe together. If you just see them in interviews, 
their their chemistry is amazing so i think they were perfect for this role and the girl in this movie she was amazing too she was really good and it actually felt like it took place in the 70s you know number four and three i've backed up and switched around so many times i may do this again in the future but number four is arrival arrival i think has some of the best camera work i've ever seen but I thought Amy Adams was amazing. She had to carry the movie on her own, really. And I love how the story isn't an alien attack or an alien invasion. It's just aliens have landed. And we're like, why are they here? And the ending just floored me. The ending was amazing. And it made me think a lot. And number three, some people, especially people in Deep Sheet, might hate me for putting it up this high. But I just love Captain America Civil War. It's just so genius how they got the superheroes to fight against each other. And I thought the action was just amazing. Sequences got better and better and better, in my opinion. And there were just times in the movie theaters where I was just like, whoa. Like when, when Bucky flipped that motorcycle and spun around and landed back on it, just started driving, I was like, oh my god. My number two is Hacksaw Ridge. Hacksaw Ridge is just an amazing war movie. This might be my favorite war movie behind Saving Private Ryan. The way they just throw these horrific scenes at you, you're taking it all back like, oh my god, this actually happened. And this is just an amazing story. Mel Gibson did amazing with this movie, and I'm glad he's back making or directing in movies. My number one pick of the year is La La Land. It's just done things to me that no other movie has ever done before. I hate musicals. Like, I hate musicals. But La La Land's songs weren't annoying like most musicals. Like, they were fun and catchy. Direction in this movie. The first scene is a long one-shot choreographed dance that that I have to give major props to Damien Chazelle to. That's the guy who, who I think should win Best Director, by the way, if you couldn't tell already. This ending will be talked about as, I think, one of the most controversial endings of all time in movies. Spencer told me this the other day, and I agree with him. I would never heard, or I never really got the term of future classic until after I saw La La Land. That will go down as a future classic, I bet you. All right, guys, well, that's my top 10 movies of the year. Let me know what you think, what your top 10 are. If I left something out, be sure to stay tuned because Monday, I'm pretty sure it's Alex's turn. Yep, he's going to be posting a video on Monday, so check that out. We got a lot of stuff on the Deep Cheap channel that we're posting almost every day, and just stay tuned for all that, guys. It's going to be amazing. All right, see ya.